All right, being the hour of 1030, I'd like to um, welcome everybody to the Kane County Jobs Committee. I apologize for the lateness, but um, the community before us, the Energy and Environmental had a lot of really important topics to get through. Um, so I apologize. And we will try to keep this brief because we all wanna go down and eat food. So, um, <laughs> do we have roll call? Bates? Bates here. Doherty? Oh. Doherty. Ford? Ford present. Strathman? Strathman here. Young? Young here. Lewis? Lewis here. Alan? Alan present. You have a quorum in the room? All right. Um, Mr. Doherty has requested that he um, could participate online because of health reasons. And if there's no objection from the committee, I would like to okay that. Okay, seeing no objections, Mr. Doherty will be participating online. All right. Madam um, Chair, Strassman yes. here. Yeah. Did you, did you get my request for that same thing? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Strathman will also be um, doing online because of personal reasons. Um, so also, is that okay with the committee? Okay, everybody's okay with that too? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Okay, um, now I need an approval of the minutes from May 12, 2023. Alan moves minutes. Okay. Alan moves forward seconds. I think we can do unanimous. Unanimous consent. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Moving along. Um, the Office of Community Reinvestment, Workforce Development. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, I Mr. Will... Berger. Thank you. Um, I know that time is of the essence, so I'll just say that our, our financial reports are included in your packet, and we would refer you to those, and let us know if you have any questions. All right, excellent. I, I appreciate you um, doing this. As we get um, a couple months on, we'll probably ask for you for a more detailed um, report, but this is perfect for today, so thank you very much for um, consideration. You're very welcome. Any, any questions for the Office of um, Community Reinvestment? Okay, keep up the good work. Moving right along, um, I think we will, unless you have any comments, Co-Chair. I'm we'll looking forward to our square table. Awesome, yes, <laughs> our square table. All right, um, jobs committee, several updates. Mr. Van Kirkhoff or? And don't all jump oh, oh no good good morning jobs many and board members um so for our rise grant update it's it's a brief update say your name oh okay. this is uh, chris toth speaking um so for a rise grant we're really excited because we can move right into our next item which is our uh kane county economic development strategic plan consultant which is bob weisbord from uh who's the president of rw ventures um and just a few days ago the county board approved them as our consultant for the rise grant so that's my update for today So, Bob, if you'd like to come on up, when, if it's all right with you, we can just move right into Bob's presentation. Absolutely. We're excited for it. Uh, good morning. Thank you all for inviting us here. We're glad to be uh, off and running. It's kind of a pre-launch. We just learned today and just signed the contract today. Um, we got this presentation up. Great. Thank you. So what uh, I was asked to do is very, and I'm going to try to do this very quickly, is kind of 10 minutes of overview of the, the theory that informs the way we do this work. And then some, uh, uh, some Karen's gonna come up, Karen, who's uh, I'll introduce in a minute, is gonna come up and spend a few minutes on the practice, kind of how the work will unfold. Uh, this is kind of a pre-launch, so we're gonna be looking for all the help we can get from you all to, uh, uh, as we get going. So let me, let me jump into it. The, uh, and you only have Karen here today, but we have a very large product team and it will keep growing. And this is one of the things people should be aware of because we welcome suggestions of people we should pull into the work. And especially as we get deeper into particular industries or issues like housing or agriculture, we keep building the team with experts. Um, the current team is my company, Mass Economics. Teresa Lynch was the research director for Michael Porter. Um, she's got what I think is the best database in the country, business database in the country, and does heavy lifting on kind of industrial analysis, quantitative analysis. Since so GPS, Merrick and Rachel, many of you have met, they are affiliated with Brookings, uh, where I also have been affiliated and they helped coordinate the regional collaborative that will be a key partner in uh, understanding this work and, and particularly in implementing it. 
And then Rod Miller, um, Rod Miller uh, helped with the Detroit turnaround, ran the New Orleans Economic Development Agency after Katrina, ran in West Puerto Rico. He now runs the Miami-Dade Economic Development Agency. He's an old longstanding colleague uh, with a deep specialization broadly in economic development, but particularly around uh, distressed communities and populations. And Shelly Herman um, used to work with me at Shorebank and is uh, then ran a business, an agriculture uh, distribution business in effect, and has deep expertise in some of the agriculture and food processing and manufacturing issues we anticipate. So we have a we have a strong team already and we expect it to keep growing. I wanted to give this this slide condenses kind of a, a 50 page paper in an hour lecture into into three points, which I just wanted to throw out there to inform. Oh, we lost the animation, I guess. Um, so uh, on the left, it's normally animated, but on the left, these two charts are indications of the extent to which the economy is changing. We, we are in what some people call the fourth industrial revolution, and we're just barely into it. You know, we're 30%, not 70%. Think of the Internet of Things, think of AI, think of all the things that are transforming how we do business and have been for the last 20 years. Uh, one of the interesting byproducts of that is that the places that destroy firms, this is creative destruction in the, in the formal economic sense, are growing faster. So this top chart is the is the major metropolitan areas, and it's the ratio of firm destruction to total firms on one axis and growth on the other, and you see a very clear correlation. In fact, you want to keep growing and turning your economy toward the new opportunities that are arising in this economy. The bottom chart is, a, is another way of getting at the same thing. In the 20s, uh, the average firm in the S&P index stayed there for 60 years, and now it's between 15 and 18 years. That's how fast we're turning. The churn is the formal phrase, but we're churning our economy. And it, it makes it important to figure out kind of what you're going to be good at and how you're going to compete in the next economy. The second thing is the way in which we do that. We, we've done a lot of work nationally uh, with, a, with Brookings and a national team around the drivers of economic development in the next economy. We really think there's five intersecting market drivers. One is your concentration of firms. <clears throat> it's called clusters, but kind of what industries you have. Second is your, is your labor markets. That not, it's not just the level of your human capital, how well it deploys into your economy, how well it's aligned with where your economy is going. Third is innovation infrastructures, this entrepreneurship, small business support, a particularly important one in this economy. The other two are, are not as frequently focused on, but have become more and more important. One is what we call spatial efficiency, and here it's called improving urban form. Um, Ed Glazer at Harvard, an economic geographer, talks about how the very reason we have cities is to move around people, goods, and ideas, and the places that connect and move people, goods, and ideas across companies and consumers and residents and, and supply chains are the ones that uh, succeed the most. So this is looking at your spatial efficiency. And the fifth one is governance, not government, governance. So it's the networks formal and informal through which people and firms connect and deals get done. And, uh, uh, and the, the institutional economics, this is a formal field, it used to be a backwater no one paid attention to, and this economy more and more important because what's happening is you figure out what you're good at, where your assets are, what the, how they concentrate, how to connect them regularly to drive innovation and, and product and greater productivity and efficiency. The point, the final point in this third chart is that it used to be cities behind caught up with each other. This was called divergence, right? So um, in effect, labor and capital have diminishing returns and as the place was doing well, they offered less opportunities for workers or money and they went to somewhere else and that place then caught up. Now, this is what's happening in the bottom chart. And it started about 20 years ago, but it's even more true now. The places ahead are keep getting further ahead. It's because in this economy, knowledge assets are so important. Knowledge assets and connectivity, and that doesn't have diminishing returns. So the places that are doing well, that, that figured out what they're good at and their knowledge assets and are concentrating and achieving these synergies attract more and more people and firms like them. So it becomes much more important to be deliberate about what you're gonna be good at. Uh, this change in the drivers of the economy and I'm almost done. This is the only theory you're going to hear for the next six months, you know, but this kind of frames a lot of the work, um, is resulting in a shift in how we approach economic development. I talk about this sometimes as the shift from business development to economic development. We used to chase deals, you know, offer incentives and attract companies. And that's still important. But it, from this strategy, it's a tactic. You know, once you know what companies you want to attract, and you built your own assets so it made your place more attractive, then as a tactic, you can go do attraction. On the left side of the signpost, you have the traditional econ metropolitan or regional economic development approach, which is chasing deals at competing with your neighbors 
Um, and the community development, the neighbor development is separate from the regional economic development and equity is pursued separately. These days you realize that you gotta figure out what you're gonna be good at. So you gotta build your own assets first, even to attract companies. Like the best way to do foreign direct investment, to do exports is to have your foreign companies succeeding, you know, and they send the message. But across the board, you wanna figure out what industries you're gonna compete at, invest in them. And then, and then your entrepreneurship work, your innovation work, your network work, all the other, the human capital work can be informed by and drive you being, that being what you're good at. And then you can turn around and do attraction and all the other things that, because you're such a competitive and attractive place. So there's a, a fundamental kind of reframing. With that reframing in which you wanna build what we call inside out, you wanna build from your assets and then go attract. Um, what we realized, and, and we've been doing this, this particular approach for about 15 years, we developed it with Brookings, um, and we call it Metropolitan Business Plan. What we realize is you're identifying your assets, you're figuring out your mission, your growth goals, your inclusion goals, et cetera. Um, and then you're turning that into strategies and strategies into initiatives and products and services. And that sounds a lot like business planning. And then kind of how, how much capital do I need? How many staff do I need? What kind of equipment do I need? And then operations, and then you're measuring it and you're readjusting every couple of years. Uh, so we applied a business planning methodology to looking at regional assets. That's what, that's what it looks like on the right. And that's in effect what we'll be doing. Uh, I wanna say one more word before I turn it over to Karen, um, who will talk more about the, the, uh, what we're gonna be doing. Karen, you're gonna, you're gonna pick up now. And that's, I just, I just wanna make really clear at the front end of this, that we are, we are transparent. We welcome all the help we can get. We need, there's a, the quality of the output has to do with the quality of the input here. We'll get huge amounts of data. We've done this in, you know, in 20 regions. So we, we have a lot going in, but we are totally dependent on you all to connect us to the right people, to the developers, the investors, the residents, the community groups, the development organizations, the officials that can give us the nuggets of ideas that we can all build together. This is a very interactive process. Um, so we really at the front end wanna send a message that we need all the help we can get and we uh, welcome any kind of feedback anytime. So thank you. Hi everybody. Um, so I'm gonna go into what this work is going to look like over the next uh, six months or so. Will you um, say your name again, just yes. so we have it in the record? Uh, my you. name is Karen Cuenca, associate with RW Ventures. Um, so I'll be going into what the process is going to look like. There are four main components to this process, as you can see here, and there is overlap between the different phases. Um, we often go back to earlier stages of the process as we're getting insights from the ongoing market analysis and as we're getting insights from stakeholders that we are talking to. And this process unfolds a little bit differently depending on the project and the region that we're working with. Um, we start first with a very deep dive in quantitative and qualitative data. Um, and that includes like an industry cluster analysis that we'll do with mass economics to understand what's concentrating and growing in your region. We'll also do an assessment of past existing and um, upcoming investments so that we understand the landscape. And we'll also start to identify and interview stakeholders to understand um, the overall picture of the region and also what the vision is for the region. Once we have a good handle on that, we move into strategy development where we start to think about what strategies are best suited for your region based on its strengths, its assets, and where it wants to go in the future. Um, we often go back to market analysis to take a, you know, dig a little bit deeper into certain industries or talk to experts. Um, once we move into implementation planning, that is a little bit more about figuring out what specific activities to implement. So that could be specific products, services, and policies, like maybe a shared manufacturing center or a food innovation hub. And at this phase, we focus on like looking at different regions, doing a review of best practices and different models out there and figuring out how to adapt it for your region. Um, and the, the last stage is starting to think about what goals to set, what metrics to track over time. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the work that we'll be doing over the next six months or so. Um, and as I mentioned, we'll be engaging a, a pretty broad group of stakeholders throughout the process. Uh, there is an opportunity here to leverage the process of developing a strategic plan for the region and, and then also 
developing the institutional capacity that you need to implement that plan after it's been completed. And this is an example of an organizational model that could flow out of this phase of work. Of course, it's gonna look different for depending on the strategies we develop and, and kind of how the work will be distributed, but this is an example of what we're working towards so that you can be set up for implementation. Uh, this is the timeline here broadly laid out, assuming a launch start of July 1st. Um, we'll move into market analysis first and concentrate on that for the first couple of months. We have at least two check-in points uh, where we share findings and kind of get feedback uh, from Kane County. Um, and as you can see, there are stakeholder engagement periods planned throughout the process, but we welcome you know, any insights or questions you have throughout and even early on in as we're starting this work. Um, in terms of next steps, these are already some ideas that we have in terms of requests for information for King County and kind of partners and stakeholders. The, this is uh, key information that we have needed for in past projects that are useful to have early on. Um, and of course, you all know about King County more than we do. So any information you can give us or guide us to um, other resources or databases will be really helpful. In terms of next steps for stakeholder engagement, uh, you know, we're starting to think about who to talk to. This is a beginning list of categories. We welcome suggestions beyond the categories that are listed here. Ultimately, we wanna talk to people who have an interesting perspective on the economy, who have been around for a long time or who are actively involved in projects that are going on right now. Uh, so to conclude, um, this is our contact information. Please reach out. Uh, we're in touch, um, you know, with Mark and Chris and, and the Kane Economy County team. Uh, but please reach out if, if you do have any sort of follow up questions or comments. Okay. Um, questions from the committee. So we dumped a lot of information on you. We're happy to answer questions yeah, or get sense. comments or suggestions or anything. There's no bad ideas at this point. We're looking to just put everything on the table. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I see the word strategy, but I don't see the word tactics. Are we just throwing those into actions or? Um, I'm not sure I'm getting the question. So so let me, uh, I think I can go back here for a minute. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay, that one, go back so, down. <laughs> so this, when we lost the animation, one of the things that this slide did was stop at between strategies and products. Oh, all right. So So we, let me use an example that's particularly relevant. So I did a whole bunch of work for Cook County in the 40 South suburbs. And we started with the market analysis. We engaged a whole lot of stakeholders and that's kind of pre-organized. You know, people start to step forward, business leaders, other people with ideas. They become the core of um, developing the products and services and initiatives. And, and I think what you're calling tactics. Okay, you know, once once you know your strategic direction, we start to identify very, we don't write plans. We, we, we lead to implementation. Mm -hmm. So in the Southland, we created the Southland Development Authority. We created a metals hub. We created an innovation center. You know, and, and when I say we created in, in, in the first phase, we identified those as opportunities and we identified models for them. We did not do full business plans for them, right? So we're not, it, this phase of the plan is not an implementation. It, it will get, it won't be high level strategies only. It will have, very specific ideas, but we're not going out and doing the implementation in the next six mm -hmm. months. That makes sense? Well, I want to know that the strategies will be followed by action. And I think that's the yeah, absolutely. And we, we really don't want to write plans that sit on a shelf. No. And, 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 <laughs> okay. and it's, if we could, we would jump past the document. I mean, okay. it, what comes out of this, if it works in the next six months, there'll be a bunch of people engaged with it, excited about this idea or that one and little teams that we'll be supporting that, that, that will you know, have kind of pre-business plans, initiative plans is what we call, um, that they can then carry forward. Okay, thank you. Ms. Allen. Mm -hmm. um, Allen speaking. Um, we are pretty excited about some opportunities that may come out of the Greater Chicagoland Economic Partnership, um, which has been trying to unite the northeastern part of of uh, Illinois for a while, pandemic kind of got in the way, and now we're picking it up again. Um, is it fair to think that you are in conversation with some of those people that 
that they yeah, they may have things to offer us and you will plug into where that more all than fair so I, a couple of years ago in my capacity working with tony preckwell in cook county we convened the county chairs and we tried to create a regional organization like this we came close and then failed partly because of some political disagreements with chicago i'm simplifying a little it then went dormant and then merrick and rachel came in from brookings to help coordinate a new effort which created this new uh, GSEP, this Chicago, and uh, I was not, I was only indirectly involved in that. Merrick and I was, were meeting in the back office to learn from the history, but it's why we brought Merrick and Rachel into this team. They still staff that group. So we will be totally integrated with them. Now, uh, I think they, I know they would say, because I've talked about this, that that group can provide some help at the front end with data and some analytics and so, knowing something about the, you know, the region. Which, and we've done a lot of work for uh, World Vista Chicago too. So we wrote the plan for growth for Chicago. Um, the, and it can at the back end help with tactics, with implementation. They're not going to do heavy lifting around the market analysis and the strategy development for you. They'll be, so yeah, the answer to your question is yes, we'll fully integrate with them. Uh, the respective, and we'll take advantage of whatever they're willing to do. What we're being told is that we should not expect too much from them uh, in the core work here. That, that Thanks very much. We have government tends to build silos people get entrenched they get excited about something and they and one of the things that this board has really worked hard at is getting the silos to talk to each other and and trying to build that interconnectivity so we're always looking for those opportunities to build friends and let right hand know what the left hand is doing and so on so thanks thanks for your yeah, let me just this provokes one of the thought i think there'll be opportunities here and i'm ahead of myself because we have not done any market analysis yet so i don't know but to, to leverage uh, big institutions in the area, right? Like I helped create AmHub, which has become one of the national leading manufacturing hard tech innovation centers in the country. AmHub ought to have a, an outlet out here, you know, um, Elevate Energy. There's, there's a bunch of regional organizations that have capa development capacity, the Chicagoland Food and Beverage Network, which we also help create. What was the it. first one you said? I'm sorry. Um, M Hub. You, if you haven't looked at M Hub, it's worth looking at. It's, it, it's grown in the last five or six years. It's, it's a little older than that into one of the nation's leading manufacturing innovation centers. It's a, it's a very big deal I, I, without going into the details now. And uh, I'm, I'm still very involved with it and, and excited about the opportunities there continually driving as they grow and they're being asked to move to other places and expand. And I think you have a, a, a manufacturing base out here that would benefit from I'm it. excited you mentioned Elevate Energy. Do you, do you know Elevate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I uh, I was their founding board chair and I'm still on the executive committee and Anne is a very close friend. And um, okay. one of the areas, there's huge growth opportunity. We do a lot of work now in what we call climate-centered growth. I'm not doing climate change, we're going to do economic growth work, but if you look at the growing industries in the next economy, huge billions and billions, trillions of growth anticipated in, in things ranging from- Billions you know, and billions. Right, okay. ranging from you know, car rechargers to the, the next grid. You know, and yes. a lot of that, all, the, all those supply chains have to be built and manufactured somewhere and uh, there's real entrepreneurship and innovation and migration opportunities. The other thing I'd ask people to look for uh, let me use this example. In Cleveland, we identified all these mid-sized, small and mid-sized metalworking firms in the auto supply chain, and they were suffering. And um, in the Cleveland area, the growth industries include wind farms and medical implements, medical, you know, uh, medical devices. And if you can make ball bearings for a car, you can make ball bearings for a wind farm or for a hip joint. You know? and, and a lot of these firms, we, we created a prism, it was called, we created a center to work with these firms to migrate their equipment and talent into new markets and industries. Uh, that's the kind of opportunities we're looking for. It's kind of what, what, where's your base now? Where do you have the skills and the, and the hardware and the, and the people um, that, that you can grow their markets or grow them into new markets? And, and as you do that, you start attracting new firms. That then informs a whole set of other work. Right. Um, thank you. I have two comments to this. Um, one is that, and I'm sure you're going to do this, that you make sure that you look at what we want Kane County to be. We want to stay agricultural. We want to make sure that we do sustainability. We want to make sure that we focus on our Fox River and all of our natural resources. And of course we want manufacturing. So we want it all. Um, and it, you know, and we, we, we talk about it all, you know, and working together. So I just want to make sure that you keep in line one, what we think Absolutely. we have as our gems in Kane County. 
And Absolutely. also, one of the one of the reasons I like doing this work is I learned something new every place, and every plan is different. Yes, there's nothing cookie cutter about this. We start with uh, understanding your your base quantitatively, and then we talk to everybody and and try and understand what you want and how to align the different objectives in you in the context of your assets. You know, so. And that's what I knew the answer would be, but I wanted to make sure we all knew that. Thank you, Madam Chair. And you need to hold us to that. You need to keep reminding us if we're not getting to where you. Where oh, we we will keep reminding <laughs> you. We love our county, and we know that our county is is a gem, and we are all very proud of the things going on here. And secondly, I wanted to make sure we have um, a lot of visitors here this morning that are going to be at our summit downstairs, and I just want to. Is that? Formally say that we have a fire alarm. <laughs> that would be evacuate. Okay. Okay, our, our uh, exit would be straight out the doors and uh, We're taking a recess for a fire alarm. Front doors? Out the front doors. Come on, Deborah. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yep. What's the first? <laughs> One way to move is that one. Make sure we're I was going to say it. Why is the other exit? Why is the bathroom? Why is the bathroom? Ron, are you coming? I'm coming. All right.
get no one is there. <laughs> Although I may use that again, Bob. Well, a little excitement. He made use of it. Grass, so. <laughs> um, so that was just a false alarm. Apparently, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? You put a teapot too close to a fire alarm. It's still early. It's just like a no. I know, because I went in there you, and you were before E and E committee and I was really gonna dive on top of the garden. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. It was in, yeah, that's when the question came up. I was thinking of the porta potty sitting on the accent. <laughs> At least we know our alarm company is doing a good job. Yeah. And in the Geneva Fire Department, they were here. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but no animals were harmed. All right. We're ready to reconvene um, our jobs committee. And um, I wanted to make one last comment, and then we're going to move on real quickly because people are downstairs waiting and food is waiting. But what I, what the other thing, um, along with making sure that you are cognizant of our goals, which I know you are, is I want to make sure that um, really, really rely and pick the brains of all of our local economic development people. We have Aurora, we have Sugar Grove, we have Elgin, we have um, Algonquin. I mean, we have them all up and down the valley, and we want them to not only partner with us, but we're going to steal all the good ideas because <laughs> we want, you know, if Elgin succeeds and Aurora succeeds, the county only gets stronger. So we want to make sure that that we are really using all their expertise. Let's not reinvent the wheel on the things that are going really good in our county. And I know that they'll all be more than happy to, to chip in. So I just want to make sure. And you'll meet most of them downstairs. So Great. everybody flood these two with your cards, please. <laughs> farm Bureau. Oh, yes, in the Farm Bureau. Yeah. All right. Um, Madam Chair, Ford. Yes, Mr. Ford. I'll make it quick. You so uh, really great presentation. I really love at the very beginning where you explain what it takes to be competitive in the market. I know uh, a lot of cities like Aurora, when the casino relocated and other things took place, how the, they got beat up about uh, the strategy. But also, besides our river walk, uh, one thing I want to bring up is uh, the greatness of our forest preserves and how out, outstanding they are. Uh, Payne County is one of the few areas that you can have. Of course, Aurora is the second largest city in the state. Then you got Elgin. So you can go from a, a great cities to riding horses and, and canoeing. Yes. Most counties don't have half of that variety that we have. And the other thing is uh, we have an area where we have a lot of uh, activities over on Fabian and we have a piece of land there that's surrounded by a uh, golf course, hockey. There used to be a tennis club over there, baseball, now cross country. So it just needs some more initiative over there to have I, what I call it is a sports facility. <laughs> so it, it's just a little bit more. And, and it's, I think it'd be a great site right in the heart of uh, King County. Right, thank you. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. And let's remember not to develop those areas that are the beautiful green spaces that are drawing people to Kane County 
because we love it. We've got to be careful what that the left hand isn't doing what the right, right hand. The left hand knows what the right hand's doing. Yeah. And preserve those spaces that we love so much and don't develop the heck out of them. Thanks. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Um, there's no other questions. So let's move on and let's try to get through this as quick as possible. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Mark. Sure. Yeah, this will be this will be quick. We kind of designed the day to have kind of a uh, first part of the meeting and the presentation from uh, from Bob and his team, and then a little bit of a presentation a celebration from Karen. Yes. Uh, but I'll fill in the gap here real quick with the other items uh, on the ARPA project updates. Uh, one you're hearing about one of the major ARPA projects, and that is an economic development strategy and launching an organization for Kane County. And we're really pleased that we have the $150,000 rise grant from the state, which is uh, covering the cost of the plan. Um, but in terms of funding um, spinoff initiatives, launching the organization, uh, that's what the ARPA fund set aside is for. Uh, so we have funding to, to be actionable on the things that we find out. So we're very excited to get that process started. I will also be eligible for additional RISE funding from the state of Illinois because of our, our plan that we're developing. Uh, the other three uh, efforts, uh, projects, the agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism, we're continuing to work with uh, with the uh, ARPA committee and, and now the new ARPA program manager. Uh, so we'll have more on that at future meetings. And uh, I'll also be talking a little bit more about the Greater Chicagoland Economic Partnership update downstairs uh, for the, the broader group so they understand the partnership. And with that, I'll turn it over to Karen Miller to, to give you some great news on the uh, Fabulous Fox Water Trail. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Karen Miller with the um, King County Development Department and Mark has asked me to give a quick update about the fabulous Fox Water Trail. Oop, I lost, I'm missing a slide. Should be another slide in there. Huh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I'm missing a couple slides it appears, but um, we, uh, we did it. We, on uh, June 2nd, the um, Secretary of the Interior, Deborah Holland, released a press release from the Department of the Interior that um, the Fabulous Fox Water Trail was designated as part of the National Water Trail System. I think we all can. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> We are one of nine new national recreation trails designated as part of the national trail system in 2023. And we are the only water trail. We are also the longest trail that was designated this year at 158 miles. Um, we also have, we are also on the um, National Park Service National Water Trail System website. And I did have a slide of that. I apologize, it seems to be missing. And I also, um, had a slide that um, has a list of our media coverage. We've gotten quite a bit so far. Um, we are included in the Department of Interior's weekly video update. We've been included in, in articles in Smithsonian Magazine, USA Today, Travel and Leisure Magazine, Men's Journal, Daily Herald, St. Charles Patch, Kane County Chronicle, Chicago. I, I did an interview with the Chicago Tribune. Um, a men's magazine called The Manual. And then yesterday I also recorded a, an interview with WGN Radio, which is supposed to be aired uh, either today or sometime over the weekend. A new celebrity. Okay, here we go. Just to refresh your memory, in Kane County, there are approximately 40 miles of Fox River with 27 public access sites, 8.8 .8 million regional residents within 50 miles, 400 miles of land-based trails to connect to the Fox River, three convention and visitors bureaus, and we also draw Chicago international and regional tourists um, with our three passenger train lines and two interstate tollways. 
And that is my presentation. Oh, there was a slide that you had included too. I don't know what, what's on here. <laughs> Okay, and how many this is the last slide, I'm, I apologize. Um, so this kind of gives you a history of um, our uh, funding uh, through the infrastructure fund through ARPA um, and right where we are right now at 2023, um, launch site signs have been installed and depending on grant awards, staff will hire a consultant and begin selecting locations for new and expanded launch sites. Is there anything else that you wanted to say, Mark? No, I just wanted to underscore, since we have so many visitors here, we'll be working, reaching out to all the communities along the Fox River and the park districts and forest preserve to identify existing launch sites that could use improvements and identify new launch sites that, especially those that would capitalize on economic activity and access to the river. So we're really excited about this, uh, uh, just based on the amount of publicity that the, uh, and accessibility, yes, uh, to the river. Uh, so just the, uh, the the amount of uh, excitement it's generated, uh, we're really uh, enthused about the increase in tourism and access for our local residents. And I know you already applauded for the designation, but I, I'd request a applause for Karen Miller, who really was the, vision and spearhead person on this whole project. Here, here. My pleasure. <laughs> no, it's exciting news. You've worked on this a very long time. All right, um, I don't see any new business um, and no public comments. We need to, I need a motion, a unanimous motion, Page please. To, to do a check course on file. Oh, we place for a check yes. file. Face moves. Four seconds. Four seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed? Okay. No need for executive session. And then I need the motion to adjourn to downstairs. Face moves. Okay. Four seconds. <laughs> All right. 